What's up guys? Today we're going to make this super versatile all-wheel drive minivan even more versatile by installing this Class 3 trailer hitch from eTrailer. Here is the price and part number of the hitch we'll be installing today. You can certainly do this job with a jack and a couple of jack stands in your driveway, but since I have access to a lift, we're going to go ahead and utilize it. First thing you need to do is remove this lower splash shield. There are a couple bolts and a couple different style screws you have to remove to get it off. Once the shield's off, you can see where the hitch is going to be mounted. You have to remove these plastic plugs, and there's threaded holes in there for the bolts. We're going to have to lower the exhaust slightly to access this side. Here's what the shield looks like on the ground. Next, we're going to need to lower the rear portion of the exhaust. I have a ratchet strap supporting the muffler right now why pry the brackets out of the rubber grommets. You will need to lower the muffler about a foot to be able to access the holes. Next we're going to remove the rubber plugs from the holes to access the threads. See that we have three on each side of the vehicle. If the plugs or tape are missing and then you have rust in the threads, you may want to clean them out before running the bolts in. Here's a look at the Class 3 2-inch receiver trailer hitch I got from eTrailer. As you can see, the receiver drops down from the hitch and it will make it for a nice concealed look. Uh, it comes with all the bolts and washers you need to install it and the instructions. The instructions are pretty simple, just six bolts to install. Now in the instructions, it did state you have to remove the rear bumper cover, and I wasn't sure why it said that. So I figured out how to do it without doing that, and I'm going to show you guys how I did it. Now I did have use of an assistant, but if you're doing this on the ground, you may be able to just do it by yourself. There are three metal tabs that you can't clear with the uh, trailer hitch with the bumper installed. Now these tabs have little threads on them, and that's what helps hold up the lower splash shield. So the tabs are real thin metal, they're easy to bend, I bent them down by hand and then we were able to slide the bumper uh, out just a hair and get the hitch installed without touching the rear bumper at all. So you can take the bumper off if you want, but you don't necessarily have to do that and it will save you about a half an hour or so of your time. So now we're going to thread the bolts in by hand and then we're going to go ahead and tighten them up. All right, so we got three bolts on each side, all torqued down. And see, these are the little tabs I was talking about. They're super flimsy. They don't really do much. So you can just pry them down with your hands, slide the hitch up in, and then and then just go ahead and push it right back up with your hand, and then that will support the shield when you go to put it back on. So that that saved, like I said, at least a half an hour of not messing around pulling that rear bumper off. It was pretty easy. So that's what the hitch looks like installed. Next we're going to go ahead and hang the rear exhaust back up. Make sure we get them pushed all the way through the grommets. See that? All pushed in. It does help if you use some sort of silicone lubricant when you're removing and installing the grommets. Next we're going to install the splash shield, but before we do that we need to cut a notch in it as outlined by the instruction manual. It needs to be 4 inches wide by 7 inches deep. I reused a ruler to help me line up the holes and I used some dikes to help start the cuts. This material is pretty flimsy and you can use a heavy duty pair of scissors or a razor knife and it will cut right through the material. I use the ruler to help me get a straight line. Once it's cut, you can go ahead and pull the notch out and then you're ready to reinstall the shield. Like I 
they said there's a couple different fasteners, some screws, and some different bolts. So here's what the completed install looks like. If you have a hoist and the right tools, this job could take you as little as 20 minutes. If you're gonna do it on the ground, like I said, with hand tools, you're probably looking at about an hour, unless you take the bumper cover off, then you'd be looking at it a little longer. We're gonna let it down and see what it looks like at ground level. I can see you can't really see the hitch at all, just the receiver, that's the look I was going for. I think it looks uh, way more factory than having the big tube sticking out. Plus, uh, sometimes they tend to get rusty, and you can see that rust sticking out of the bottom of your car. It can cause a pretty bad eyesore. So I'm pretty happy with the way this one looks. Now we're ready to test it out. This particular model has a max tongue weight of 525 pounds. This bike weighs a little over 200 pounds. The rack's about 30 pounds, so this shouldn't be a problem at all. Fantastic. Alright guys, so that pretty much wraps up today's video. As you can see, we got the trailer hitch installed. It's uh, pretty concealed up here, not like the, the U-Haul style. This one looks more factory, that's why I went with this one from E-Trailer. Uh, it does have a pretty strong tongue weight, as you can see. I did have my dirt bike mounted on the back there. So I'm super excited about this. We're going to be able to put the bicycle rack on and take the kids riding. Put the dirt bike on. Uh, so if you have any questions about this install, feel free to ask. Thanks for checking out my channel. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and also check out my Facebook page. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Have a great day.